let, let you scale in the same ways. And this is a team that's going to run at you and just get overwhelmingly aggressive, which is what we saw in the Liquid series, where if they win, it feels like they're going to win in 30 minutes. And Liquid was able to like somehow do that weird thing where remaining. they were actually the ones like pushing the pace forward with that Phantom Assassin. Five and I think that kind of idea remaining. is how you go forward if you're newbie. And like, newbie can play like that, right? Yeah, get ready to fight these guys. They yeah. won't let you play your tempo setting game. And that's the best part about VP is they sort of take you out of your game mm -hmm. and they make you just like get into these weird aggressive wars that you don't want to get into. Newbie but it felt like newbie was a bit bear. more prepared for that. And that was a much closer game one than I thought we'd see. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get into the uh, second draft then and see whether this is a 2-0 or whether Newbie can make a fight of this. We do, I guess, Alan, we expect all three games today to be all three maps, don't we? Oh, yeah. I, I mean... If this was a 2-0, we'd be very surprised, I think. No, just because Virtus Pro is such a moment. And look at this. Virtus Pro is just such a strong momentum team. And they're going to go with a hero that's just a staple. There's that solo Ogre Magi who's just such a lane bully. I mean, we see him just diving under tier one towers to get off the ignite on the enemy mid, sometimes even dying in the process. But that's just, that's how they play. They're going to make you feel that pressure from minute one. It's weird that they don't care about the Venom at all. Virtus Pro. It seems like they just have like these two or three heroes that they're going to pick no matter what. And I like that. It's kind of setting your own meta and doing the things that you feel like are more competitively viable. And it makes you an interesting team to play against because you're not just following this like strict idea that you have to first pick some of these heroes. And what it does also is it forces enemy teams into like questioning their own ideas. Yeah. It's like newbies like, well, we had Venno and it didn't quite work out. And they weren't willing to touch it. Does that mean that hero's bad now? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I really like I like the fact that um, VP is just coming at you in waves, right? They're not necessarily going to death ball into a team fight. And so you can't necessarily count on Venno getting in the middle of that and just getting this huge poison of his gales off on everybody. So Newbie going to flip the script a little bit. They're going to turn around, pick the Nature's Prophet. Uh, not a hero that KP plays too terribly much of. Yeah, this is, Five okay, so this is super interesting because now this is newbie adapting, yeah. and they feel like there's not enough bands, and they'll take these heroes, so what, what can we do? Let's pick them ourselves, because yeah. I haven't seen KP play Nature's Prophet. It, it doesn't really fit his kind of tempo uh, play style, and Bane is a hero that I think matches up okay against Ogre, because you need heroes that will readily trade with that hero, but... Uh, Virtus Pro, like their options are super open. They take Sven immediately. That's going to be their bloodlust core. And yeah, this is zero. I thought we see in the last game from them. Yeah, I, I like it a lot better here because it is against a Nature's Prophet. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, when people pick NP, you second phase ban the Sven. It's just one of the best matchups that you can get because the Treants are sort of useless against them. So an identical first two for newbie, but copying Virtus Pro. Yeah, and that's like that's the. Sorry, I'm taking up so much time, but it's really interesting to me because newbie, like, they they kind of had to like follow along with this meta. Yeah. That they don't. I don't know if they necessarily want to do this. Of course, you're a professional player, so you're prepared to play most things. Yeah, yeah. But but it, neither it looks of those like are in any of the players' top ten. Yeah, right it's now. it's like right. I'm watching Virtus Pro versus Virtus Pro. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if they I hadn't I, put the names up, we'd actually think this was the other way around. I just I think you have to be careful with that though, because again, at the end of the day. You, you get used to playing a certain way as a team, and I think you can get a little bit too caught up in countering what the other guy is doing, mm. and all of a sudden get to like the 40 minute mark and saying, okay guys, let's go win the game. And you gotta play differently. This though I like, Newbie are gonna turn around and say, okay fine, we might have started the draft off differently, but we're gonna go back to a hero that's just so solidly in our wheelhouse. I, this Wisp pick though is so sick. Yeah, Queen of Pain though so sick. is really nice against Wisp. Just because it's hard to uh, it's hard to kill her. She's one of the few mid heroes that doesn't mind too much, and I'm really curious to know what newbie picks as their uh, secondary support. Like the options that I think are okay here because there's no Rubik is Sand King. Uh, it's a double stun option. You can even take something like Nyx or Disruptor. Maybe they don't feel comfortable with those because they already have the Bane, so they want something a little bit more mobile that can follow around the map. Now the, the, the Sand King and Nyx Assassin are two of the top three heroes for Kaka. The Nyx Assassin's actually been banned against them in, I want to say, the majority of their games. I would be okay with either the SK or the Nyx, and if they're going to take a core like really early on, I'd be okay with... Uh, I feel like the Bloodseeker isn't bad here. Something that allows them to just like fight early on. The Rupture is quite good against that hero. Or you could just go the route of picking like a really mobile core as well. Yeah. 
That's that's the other thing that I really liked about the iOS fun combo is that it does. I don't know if it takes away, but it punishes a lot of heroes that are in Moogie's wheelhouse, like the uh, like the Ursa, for example. Yeah, I'd be okay with Sanking. I'd be okay with uh, Nyx. If they want to move this Bane to a 4, they can even take something like Witch Doctor. But Witch Doctor hasn't been popular in quite I did some time. see it once yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, once the day before that as well. I think it's a uh, secret EG. Both of, uh, both have used it. Not very often, but they've both used it. Getting through a lot of their reserves. Oh, there's Wyvern too. Oh, that's Wyvern. a good that's a really good call. I'd be okay with Wyvern, Sanking or Okay, so they take the SK. Yeah. It's a bit of more of a playmaker and you need team fight right now. Like you need guaranteed stuns because your offlaner like that's the downside of having Nature's Prophet as an offlaner. He's so unique in the sense that he doesn't come with a stun. So TP now remaining. Yeah, we got to start thinking about an offlaner, and this is something I really like the uh, Nature's Prophet pick for Pasha in the last match because Pasha is, he's a very, very gifted core player. He struggles sometimes on the primary initiator. So they're going to go ahead and commit to the Dragon Knight. That's probably going to be your mid laner against the Queen of Pain. Um, that hero, it's, it's, the book on it is that Queen of Pain's going to win that lane, but Dragon Knight can hold his own. There was a game, though, pretty recently where, where Mid One played a Dragonite and just dumpstered a Queen of Pain just before TI. I think it was at the summit that really made me rethink the potential. If there's a roaming support like an Ogre Magi, if you can get some uh, support from the Wisp, that Dragonite can take advantage of the instant Dragon Tail stun and ha actually have some kill potential on the Queen of Pain. So if I'm Virtus Pro right now, the Dark Seer's been banned. Yeah, I would be, I'd be looking towards heroes like, I think Doom's quite good here. Uh, I think Doom's got a lot of potential. Okay, as well as, the oh, they take brew. The brew, yeah, and that's again when if VP have a weakness as a team, it's Pasha. He can be so good with your traditional offlane initiator team fighter heroes. But he can also have some really bad games on this series. It's just high variance. So I'm going to look at this brew as the game progresses. Newbie don't, they don't necessarily have a great lineup against the brew. So it probably is okay. Timber. Yeah, Timber, one of the, again, one of the heroes that can really punish that, those Wisp combos and nope. can help kite this fun. Not something we've seen so far. I mean, there's three melee cores on yep. the other side. It's not a hero that you see often because it's not often you see three melee cores on the other right. side. But. And a, just a bunch of strength heroes. Yeah, Virtus probably want to get up close and personal, I guess, in this second game. Uh, Will, what have you made of the draft? I actually really like Newbie's draft. I think that Virtus Pro might be the better team. Actually, I'm almost certain they're the better team, but I think Newbie has a better draft, so I'll go with them. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think the last couple of picks by Newbie, they picked a lineup that they're really, really comfortable with, and I think they're going to be able to force the action. Okay, so... Our oh, newbie able to bring this one back. They are a game down right now to Virtus Pro. Can they pull it back to 1 1, save their major, and head to the grand final? Or are Virtus Pro about to make it the first team through? Let's find out as we head back to your commentary team of Odie Pixel and Melini. very much red eye and here we have game two virtus pro newbie game one ended in a bit of a bang very sudden sort of crumbling of newbie and vp were able to secure that win game two very different drafts we're seeing things switch up a very interesting final pick there from newbie the timber saw and it's it's looking like a pretty spicy game for a timber band i love the timber saw pick here i am a little bit concerned similar to last game about how are they going to actually do this late game but timber saw solves so many of their problems. You versus four strength heroes, or according to O and five. <laughs> I mean, he's a big guy, that ogre. But as you said, he's a smart guy. You're just role playing as ogre. It's okay. Exactly. I understand. I was the uh, the other head. But they'll keep the the control on this bounty room with this play by the looks of it, forcing Moogie back. And we'll see what sort of lanes come out from VP if they they want to switch things up, turn anything aggressive. Is there any sort of matchup that either side needs to avoid? Mm. With that timber in mind, in particular. I'm looking at the matchups that they would want to do. I mean, they're all about even, right? You're going to be versus strength hero in either lane as a Timbersaw. I think 
early game, you might actually yeah. struggle a little bit just because you might not be able to right click too much versus the Brewmaster if he goes for the early, uh, early haze. But I think he should get CS anywhere. How many times has Mugi played Timber Saw? Yeah, it's a good, we've seen, well, yeah, Mugi this game playing the Timber and SCC playing back. Sort of heroes that I, I feel at least are not necessarily the most common, common pickups for them. Lil? Only because of scaling issues. Oof. He's a he can't really go for that. It's, he may be on the way back. He knows that it's making the trip. Are they, how careful are our newbie going to be about this one, Lil? He's not going to look to move in position for he knows that he's actually needed in the mid lane because no one's been getting gone on by Faith. SCCC and Kaka with the stun from Kaka. That's going to be your first blood. They just walk in and take it. Lil, maybe because of that courier snap opportunity he was looking for, couldn't quite get there in time to provide the save that no one needed. I don't know if he would have been able to kill the courier. Io's not the best courier sniper. That's a pretty pesky lane for no one, especially at this early level. Being level one against these heroes is not fun as the DK. Very hard for him to get in for the CS. He's got the brief fire, though, and it has got a hefty creep wave moving in on him. And the XP, as we see, being split much more by Newbie. Having three heroes here in comparison to, at the moment, just the two on VP. Bottom lane, KP being chased down by Lil and Ramses. Won't be able to get himself out of there. Mid lane solo's not going to be as lucky. This aggression from these three heroes of Newbie really, really just stepping up the pressure in this mid lane. And VP, they're, they're struggling to deal with it. Two deaths in, in one and a half minutes in this mid lane for Virtus Pro. Yeah, sometimes having a big creep is really bad for your team, actually, especially if you, if you don't have a good way to clear it. They just got dove because of so many creep waves at the tower. And they're going to have to worry about KP TPing in soon, too. Yeah, absolutely. These mid lane skirmishes could get even nastier for VP. As we see again, just Faith. Faith's harassment along with the dagger from the Queen of Pain. Yeah. Making it so hard for no one to get involved at all in terms of farming. Already a poor matchup, I would say, for the Dragon Knight. But I mean, with the recent, with the brief fire change, it's not that bad. But with the Bane sitting there, it's awful. Yeah. No fun at all here for the DK. He is still getting CS out of it, as we can see. He's got seven at the moment, but SCCC, of course, does have the advantage, as expected, with the backup that he hasn't. Oh, look at this. This, Oh, this is so But Kak has got an invis room. This could set something up again if no one's not too careful in that middle lane. We'll see if they can find a chance to jump in on him. As they're making the go, Kaka goes in with the burrow strike. He's pretty tanky now with the two points in the Dragon's Blood. And does keep himself alive because of it. But I'll just this consistent harassment on this DK. Oh, chicken's kill. Nice. Okay. Yeah, KP. You said to look out for the TPs, and he does make it. <laughs> Makes it happen. Well, that will make the lane even tougher for no one. Is, uh, no one's got to be careful. He can't tilt. He's got to keep his cool. But as Have definitely. the guy stream? Come on. <laughs> But on, everything is there to, to make him tilt. Newbie know that they just want to put no one mentally off his game. I don't really see him tilt though in professional games no. though. Uh -huh. He's actually pretty resilient to that. Uh, as I was saying earlier in this in this major, just out of sort of individual player performances, I think at this land, no one is is for me definitely up there at the top. He's had some incredibly solid games uh, here in Hamburg. Uh, there's any questioning about that. And, and Newbie know that. That's why they're going full in on him on this mid lane. It's time we'll have Solo to back him up. No one. He's going to tick down low, but the Dragon's Blood regen should be fine. He's got a Fairy Fire as well, so Dagger won't quite kill him, but he's just keeping him zoned back. He's got the Salve, so we'll still be able to remain in in the area of the experience. They should tide him over until Fi where the Shrine and the Courier should kind of coincide and help him out even more. So Pasha did go for the early point in Drunken Haze. Look at this wraparound from Kaka. Yeah, we know he's a bit of a beast on the Sand King. His movements Ooh. are always on par. Have they got the burst to bring down this Brute? Well, chase him down. Drunken Haze buying him some time. But he should fall here. So they've got the slow from the Caustic. Mookie cuts him down with the Whirling Death. And Newbie picking up a third. These movements, these these plays from both Kakra and Faith, the call to stay in the mid and then to make these moves up top. It's it's certainly having a heavy effect on the on the laning phase. And Newbie are getting that edge. We, we heard what KP talk about it on stage, how crucial the lanes were. And in how some matchups, Newbie, they do struggle early on. So in this game too, and to be fair, the start of game one, they seem to have rectified and focused on those issues, and they're looking very hot to start things off. Bottom lane, KP in trouble, though, as they move in with the stun. Solo with the rotation will catch out. And Nature's Prophet, VP getting themselves a kill on the board. The only nice thing that's happened for them this game thus far. So Pasha actually, like, not only did he go for the Drunken Haze, he also is kind of doubling down on it, too, by going for the Soul Ring as well on the okay. Brewmaster. 
So it's an unusual build, I would say. Especially versus Timbersaw, who can just spam his uh, Whirling Blades if he wants to get CS, and it actually hasn't really hurt him at all. If you look at his CS, it's perfectly No one's got to be careful. Yeah, SCC's going to jump in on this. They've got the TP from KP coming in as well. Has he got the damage? He's got the control. Sprouts out. South will be popping. The second dagger flies in. Lil, he's got the tether, and that will be enough to keep no one alive. So at least Lil's able to make the save. But again, this is time that no one is just miles away from that middle lane. They would love to get the courier kill too, but... Not quite close enough. This lineup is also is not particularly great at hitting towers. Two of their cores are actually pretty terrible hitting towers. The Queen of Pain and the uh, Tiversaw, especially sieging high ground. So I'm a little bit worried for that even if they do Look get Kaka's off to high positioning. He's coming in from behind. Just going in with the right clicks. He's got that level three. He's got the point of sandstorm. He's actually in a bit of trouble here as Lil turns up. Do they have any sort of detection or AOE? They do with the brief fire. They'll cut down Kaka. Getting a little too greedy with that positioning as uh, he underestimated the potential of VP being able to turn that one around. Normally he's, he's very on point with his, his plays, Kaka, but that one was a little questionable. I, well, I don't really think it was that questionable because I don't think he expected the Dragon Tail to come out too early. He actually oh, okay. he skilled it at level 4 or 5, I believe, and use, like, especially when he's struggling this much, you usually don't go for the stun. So you can just farm more with the Breath Fire. I mean, sometimes you'll get it defensively, but... Yeah, he just got Dragon Tail to the face. <laughs> Top lane, Moogie, definitely able to play much aggr more aggressive now with that level six, has the slow for the Shack Ramp, buying time for Kaka to close the gap. Burrow strikes there. That's the movements we expect from Kaka, and once again, doing it on this top lane, taking down Pasha. Radiance top tower is under this Timber Cell is going to be a big problem, though. Like, they don't have great magic burst at all. All they really have is, like, a Sven to chop through his enormous amount of tank ability. I guess they can just cycle him in fights and worry about him later, but... <laughs> He's still going to do a lot of damage. Especially going to be an issue for this heavily punished DK. No one again being chased down. As he sees here, has a DD. He needs help, the DK, and he's going to get it. Solo's there. That will, for the time being, at least put Newbie off jumping in onto the Dragon Knight. They may just look for Solo instead. Bottom lane, Ramses and Lil chasing down. KP will get the kill. Kakra and SCCC should be able to finish off Solo with the dagger in him and the double damage still up on that SCCC's co-op. And they revealed the stack too. Ogre kind of came down right after the seven minute mark, so they're kind of wondering what the heck he's up to. And then Sand King also went to the right to chase him, so they have very good eyes on the stack. That's something you might consider blowing a Sonic Wave on. Oh, look at this, they want to go. Oh. The Brain Sap, the stun from Kaka, that's going to be no one down again in the middle lane. What a great block from KP, that was sick. Very, tower. Yeah, really nicely done. You know, sometimes we see just going straight away with the Sprout, but he lands down the tree and gets the kill. Now the return play is going to be there. Pasha's trying to lead him with the Primal Spit, but Kaka just gets stunned up. This Ogre in a lot of trouble. Lil's going to come in looking for the save. He's keeping Solo alive for the time. No, Solo will fall, but they are able to find the big one. They get Quop, cost them both the support's lives. VP, they want to get more out of this. They may just Pasha, lands the clap, breathe fire onto KP, but Kaka's Burrow Strike holds back the DK. KP gives us some space to TP out. He's going to make it as well. Kaka still has the Sandstorm. Burrow Strike back him in a couple of seconds as well as one charges. He should be fine and he will. Gets out of there. So VP able to strike back in the sense that they get the Queen of Pain, but it's still costing them kills. And now they know Ramses is on his own down bottom. SCC's hunting. He's going to hit level six and Ramses, yeah, TP straight out away from the tier line. He cannot play around with that level six Queen of Pain on his own. That's probably what Lil macro the courier, I think. He died there and just kind of left it there. So this is nice, at least they get this big stack. And it looks like Kaka's actually gonna, gonna be able to the, leech some yeah, XP. It's gonna be nice if he can stick around in the AoE. Yeah, he knows what's up. Oh my god, he's... <laughs> he's actually getting so much XP from this. There are three Veritas Pro Heroes in the neighborhood there. Every little bit counts. He may pay with his life for it though. The stuns stack up. That is there! And with the stick charges and bow strike, Kaka's gonna live! Very nicely able to play his way out of that. As KP comes in with a Sprout. He's buying a little time for Kaka. Look at his gold, too. He has 1,600 gold on that Sand King. He's been, he hasn't really been farming at all, but he's very high in net worth. He I mean, does he's not so, look he's, like position four. He's just been so active. He's 4, 1, and 3. He's been in 7 of the 8 kills. This is, you know, the Kaka Sand King that we know and love. Well, the highest win rate and the most games. Oh, no, the, this is the highest win rate. Oh, that win rate is 74% on a hero. That is, that's incredibly high. And it, as he's expected, I mean, if over the, the patches, the years, no one TK. You, that is his best hero. That is the hero that 
that we, we know he loves and we know he loves to play it. He certainly shows it the way he plays. And, and to be fair, regardless of the pressure that he's been put on him on the mid lane, he's still getting the, the experience is good, it's just the farm that's incredibly lacking. Unfortunately for him, he has to, like, they have to give spend the stacks too. So normally you would just, you know, get level 12, whatever, farm out some huge stacks and get back in the game. So they can still farm that. So Lil should be prioritizing stacks as he has been. And that's the thing as well, because the pressure was there for for no one, Ramses has had an absolutely free game so far. He's exactly where he wants to be in farm. So he gets the ancient stacks. So sure, a little bit of the XP gets soaked up by, by Kaka, but overall, the, the pace of farm's great for Ramses. And yep. And he has Bloodlust too on the DK, so oh, that yeah. boasts up your net worth by you know, a good 30% well, this of the game. Could set up for a plan to Kaka if they get the stun into stun, and they should have the timing perfectly. Damage with Lil, should be enough with the, the spirits flying through. Kaka tries to play as well, there he goes for the TP, but he is not going to make it. VP will punish Kaka. Excellent spirit control from Lil. Lil's actually very far too. His net worth is 8th, but it's actually very high as 8th, because there's a big drop off after him. Poor Solo. <laughs> 536. He has more HP than gold, dude. It's the classic Solo. Well, as we've seen before, he, he doesn't need gold. He doesn't need farm to, to do a lot for his team Solo. Very good at playing in, in a position where he is normally starved for gold and levels. And still yet to really see Mugi show his power with the amount of net worth he has, but that, that will almost certainly change once he has that bloodstone complete which is pretty much there but it just needs to get that recipe done and then things are going to get very tricky for vp once newbie group up as five and start to look for these team fights they've got a great amount of team fight that is where their strengths lie if the game goes on the the farm game is going to be hard to play against ramsey sven but the fighting in this sort of early to mid game portion could get very rocky for VP. They're smoked up, they're looking for the opening, they get the Fiend's Grip off before the ultimate comes out and that will be Pasha gone. Quick and clean kill for Newbie. Nothing that can be done in reaction, even with the, you know, the recent patches making that cast animation a little shorter, not short enough for Pasha there. The Fiend's Grip was there immediately. And Kaka did kind of kill steal that, but all in uh, way for his Blink Dagger. So courier kill doesn't look there was much on it. Uh, it was empty, but still actually a bit of gold for the boys and Moogie off the back of that courier kill should have the gold for the bloodstone. Yeah, he's just 100 gold away. So bloodstone's going to be there as well as you said. The blink that got on Kaka for the next fight. So Virtus Pro are waiting for Moogie to do the thing that they were actually worst at, which is taking down objectives. Yeah, very terrible Roche lineup, very terrible at pushing. So Virtus Pro want them to waste their time. Uh, doing these maneuvers that aren't going to be super fruitful for, for them just because it's simply just going to take too much time. Like, they, I don't even think I have a Blightstone on. They probably they double up on the Orb of Venom, but without a Blightstone, like, just right-clicking towers is just going to take forever for them. No Medallion for Roshan too, so Virtus probably are very comfortable with just farming up and doing neutrals just because they know that newbie aren't going to waste their time with that. They're just trying to avoid fights, which newbie are really strong at right now. As well as the Bloodstone being done for, for Moogie, we have a couple of big item pickups for VP. Armlet is now complete for no one. Mana so. regen, wow. He has mana regen, and he has a wisp okay. on his team, and he has soul ring. That's actually, I usually see the damage talent, uh, especially later on combined with the attack speed talent. At level 25, 140 attack speed is no joke. And a lot of these games have gone pretty long, so you can, and he's a core, so he's more likely to get 25, and he's going for Midas. Radiant are scanning. I mean, I think if you're VP, you are happy sort of drawing it out and playing for the farm game with this lineup, with this the Ramsey's fan and the, the numerous ways you can ways you can buff him up, as you've been mentioning with the, the Bloodlust and the Tether. Kaka knows that they know. I'm not. Uh, they they had the VP scan, so they know that newbie are there. But with the way he's positioned, you can kind of tell that they know what's going on over here. Radiant structures. And it's not really a good fight, or else he wouldn't have been in that position, hiding on the northwest side. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, lane, KP, SCCC will have to take no, it all. Solo. He tries for the warding, and he will pay for it. He's going to be quickly dispatch of the ogre. And a D ward. No, that's that's so much of his net worth. Yeah, D ward and, uh, and a bloodstone charge for Moogie. Fresh off the, the about of picking it up. 
Ramses and Lil trying to in turn get something achieved on the top lane. Dragon Tail just to hold back this Timbersaw. No one, of course, no intentions of fighting Moogie at this stage, but Moogie certainly wants to find him, chasing him down. Kaka closing the gap. The Chakram into the Burrow Strikes there. No one is going to almost certainly go out of this one. He tries to arm the toggle, but the Fiend's Grip holds him in place. He's gone. Pasha commits the ult, but has to just run away. He cannot fight on his own against this lineup of Nubi. They're looking to try and chase him, see if they can get him post ultimate. And with KP. TPing in for the cutoff, they may just do it. No, he's quick with the bling. Pasha will keep himself safe. Ah, uh, Mugi was really slow throwing out the shotgun. You want the shotgun right on top of the Earth Spirit when it's uh, about to expire. But at the same time, Pasha did throw that stun out at him. And Kaka, or sorry, KP managed to escape, I believe, on the bottom lane too, during that whole time. Full stuff down, done, done now as well for KP. So a little more. Elusive and harder for VP to, to trap down in these fights. Just having that says for who, whoever gets changed under, as we've seen, Newbie's best way of making the plays has been with the spend and the DK stun. He's got any sort of four star just to, to take or you know, rip that hero away from the spend, hammering into them. You are going to buy time for, for Queen of Pain to get his blink off, for Timber to get the Timber chain off, the Burrow Strike to come out. These sort of four star plays could be crucial for Newbie in these fights. And they're also making up for the other weakness of not being able to take objectives. So we do see the Timbersaw actually going for the Medallion. He's likely going to replace that later, but it's I, at least they realize that our weakness is like, well, how are we going to do Roche? We have a really big lead right now, yeah. but we can't actually do anything with it. So now they're trying to change that right now. And Roshan is still going to be pretty tough for them, but certainly doable, I would say, at this phase, especially with Nature Prophet. Nature Prophet probably the best hero at their team at taking down Roshan. Yeah. Timbersaw's all right. And as we've been saying, they, they have got such great team fight to, to utilize around these in, enclosed areas like the Roche Pit. Yep. And for VP, it's a little harder. They, they need to make sure that they have the ult from the, from the Panda to, to really do anything major. They do add the Blink on Ramses. That's certainly going to make things a, a lot easier if they can get the jumps onto sort of the, the more glass cannony heroes like the Queen of Pain at this stage before the Sonic Wave gets blown. At least they can just itemize for sure. <laughs> Look at this stab, Ben. <laughs> Poor, poor record. One last hit, bless him. He's he's getting more now, though. That stat, I'm afraid that's outdated. We're going to have to get that one updated now. So, like, <laughs> I think he just tripled his CS in the, the last few seconds. Damn, four CS. You see that? Here we go. He's getting out of control. Ramses will be saved. Lil's there with the quick relocate. They were even looking for the Wiz, too, with the way that they were positioned. They were. They were trying to make sure that they, they could grab him as well as Ramses. They should be able to get him on the way back in as uh, Lil... Can he get himself out of this? No. Gets stunned up by the Burrow Strike, cut down, and have a Bloodstone charge for Moogie. So do they want to do Roche right now? That is a question. I could try. As you said, it's not going to be the quickest, but yeah. it is going to be pretty safe in terms of not taking any damage with the Treants tanking it up. They've got a fantastic ward as well to, to spot out any sort of action that starts going away. If I look, look at it, they've got three Observer wards kind of in between VP and themselves. This is... Very hard for VP to make any sort of gap closer on. So it's a very, very safe roast attempt. They go for the smoke, but they see it. These wards paying off and immediately newbie, they know that they can't mess around. They can't race and take down Roche at any sort of speed. So they get away. This smoke, unlikely to achieve anything for VP. And in fact, whoa, Kaka, very quick with the bling. He was ready for that one. Gets himself out of the hands of Ramses. Now Kaka wants to go back in. Leaves him with the Burrow Strike. Pasha jumps forward with the clap. Defensive Nightmare buying some time for Kaka. Will it be enough to get him out of there? No. Cut down by Ramses. VP find one. And they move on for a second. The stun's down to Faith. He can't get the Fiend's Grip out. He's gone. Kaka buying back. Newbie really wanting to try and take this fight. Even though the, the, the this ult being out on the Panda makes it very hard for Newbie to actually get in on this. They get a help back. By the Cyclone, Solo's still there. Oh, they'll, they'll get the Panda immediately with the stun. Kaka does catch him. Pasha's not going to be able to TP out. The buyback paying off in that sense that they do get the Panda kill. They go back into Roshan. And with one man down on VP and with well, the God Strength, the, the ult's being used by VP. It oh, makes the it hard Invis to go. rune. Oh, my goodness. They don't have sentries. Oh, is he going to go for a snipe? Oh. No, they got the dust. Oh. They're prepared. <laughs> the dust is out. Newbie see him. Sonic Wave as well. No one is gone. <laughs> oh. I thought he was going to make a big one. <laughs> uh, I think, was he, was he underneath that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did see him. I didn't realize they had a it. dust on him, though. I mean, why would you have a dust? They don't even have any Invis heroes. Uh, that is true, yeah. <laughs> MVP who ever had that dust, I'll tell you what. But they, yeah, they get the kill. They get the Aegis. Bane had a sentry, to be fair. But yeah, Kaka had that dust. Yeah. Maybe he expected, like, a Shadow Blade pickup from Dragonite. Maybe he, like, wanted to k uh, kill the Invis Brew if they killed the other ones. But I think mean, these are very far-fetched situations, Owen. 
having a dust raider is just <laughs> inconceivable almost. Yeah, very commendable play. I mean, it, if they didn't have it, no one would definitely have he had, had a, a high he has chance a sentry on Bane, but it was. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they like, popped that. But, but still, even just the yeah. the foresight to have popped down a sentry at the end of that rush would have been, <laughs> as you say, not necessarily likely because of. It was still really funny. It was not. He's like, oh man, I'm going to make this big play. And he's just. <laughs> Newbie. Ready to push down mid. God strength as well as the dragon form back online if if you do want to take a fight but there's 17 charges on this bloodstone solo crest Aegis on Mugi he's very hard to go on they have to go around and get to the back lines and that's exactly what they're doing with this smoke jump onto Fave Bane in trouble but I say that Kaka comes in with a good burrow strike but Bane is still surrounded he'll get taken down Mugi's trying to turn Chakram onto two don't fall from SCCC Pasha comes in with the ultimate he's looking to focus down the Queen of Pape keep SCCC out of the fight but he gets forced back buys him time to get the blink off to the side Mugi on the front lines as Kaka comes back in with the burrow strike onto Ramses popping the war cry looking for a target they'll throw down the dust they have the vision onto Kaka he cuts into him with the god strength Ramses picks up the SK kill now he's been sprouted no way to get out the tree line until now now he's able to cut through. VP take a third kill out the back of this. Mugi thinking about trying to get something in return. He's eyeing up Lil. Stick charges are there. Lil tethers across. They won't catch the IO. Mugi's deep, but VP, they're just ignoring this timber. They're going for everyone around him. The stump from Ramses is there. They've got the perfect control to get the kill onto SCCC. Mugi gets out, but VP, they played that fight absolutely perfectly. They just ignored the timber, went behind him, and for the entire fight, Mugi was trying to say, look at me, look at me, but VP, they just kept their eyes averted and looked elsewhere. There's so many issues with that fight for Nibi. Firstly, they give the Aegis to Mugi, which is just not... He doesn't need He's it. not going to die. We saw the sun hitting him, he did almost no damage, and then Ramsey's like, okay, I'm not even touching him the rest of the fight. Secondly, they didn't kite the Brew Ultimate. That is... Oh, just no generally one. the best solution to deal with the He's brutal. a little out on his own. Ooh. I don't know if Arn, there's going to be enough to save him. The whole oh, little tries for the save is not quick enough. That's two bloodstone charges for Mookie. And I think he also needs to itemize against the uh, against the Cyclone too, which would help a lot. I'm not, what happens if you Lotus the Cyclone? Because I, I know Cyclone lasts longer on non-hero units. So does that... I'm not sure. That'd be a pretty sick solution. Oh, I might see it come into play. Yeah, maybe later on. If, uh, maybe you get better, as you say. But still pretty early on in the game. 22 minutes in, 15 to 11. Newbie still having the advantage and are taking objectives. Top lane, Pash is in trouble. He's going for the TP out and uh, he will make it. I don't have any sort of way of holding him back. Some very close fights indeed. Overall, Ramsey still in the lead with the net worth. 12,000 on him at the moment, and BKB very close to being done. And that, that will cause a lot of issues for the newbies lineup. Very, very reliant on the, the magic, but they've got ways to disable him through it. Again, we saw uh, before how much a Bane can do. They just need Timbers to kill the Wisp. Maybe even get a Blink Dagger on him. He needs he needs a lot of things. I, I actually don't think he needs more armor. He's actually going for Shiva's guard. He has incredible amounts of armor. He's, he's, I mean, he's 43 without full reactive, and then he's going to have more from Shiva's. Yeah, he's. I, they're not going to focus him. As we saw from last fight, like they're not really going to focus him. I guess maybe you can get like lucky with some god strength cleaves later on and burst him down before he gets reactive, but that's also really far-fetched. I think you just go for the most likely scenario, which is you get kited and then play around, or build around that rather. So I'm not a huge fan of the Shiva's build, but we'll, we'll see how it pays off. I'd be a much bigger fan of like BKB, so okay. you can use it during the brutality and just, or you can get a Blink Dagger to do a lot of damage up front uh, onto the Wisp, and if you get Cycloned, you, you can blink out of Cycloned too. That's one of the great parts about uh, the Blink Dagger this game too. For Ramses, but Ramses does have backup. This is there from Solo, speeds him out. But Ramsey's thinking about turning, jumps in immediately again. They just ignore the timber, straight in onto KP. He gets forced back. Solo Crest on him as well. Is it going to be enough to save him? No. Ramsey's gets the cleave hit, takes down the Nature's Prophet. The Fiend's Grip was there onto the eye. They have managed to find a trade, but overall VP coming in thick and hard. Sonic Wave from SCCC, bursting them down low. Ramsey's trying to find Faith. The stun control comes out. Double kill for Ramsey's. It's two for two at the moment. He'll look towards the shrine. Ramsey's still standing pretty strong, but the control. Controls there for newbie. They cut him down post BK. 
BKB. The magical's too much for this fan. And now Pasha could be in trouble as well. He goes for the TP. Kaka, not quite the resources to get out another stun. So he will escape, but again, newbie getting some very good fights, fighting nicely around the BKBs as well. You saw again, VP, they have good intentions. They jump in on the back. They do get the KP kill straight off the bat. But that's the BKB commitment. And the rest of Yubi's team, very good at keeping the distance with these heroes, like the Timbersaw and the Quap, and then coming back in at the opportune time. They actually use grip on the Wisp <laughs> that fight. That's how, <laughs> when there's a BKB spend at the that's how important the Wisp is too for the Pro's lineup, so. Newbie should continue to try and prioritize the Wiz, even if it does mean expanding grip. And Virtus Pro, they have to protect the Wisp a little bit better and get no one a BKB. The seeds of fortune. He actually, is he, does he have it? Okay, yeah, he just picked it's it up just, actually. Yeah. So this is a good time for them to make a play. They smoked out a base for this. Okay. They don't want to give up this next Roche, but you don't want to find Timber. No. Nope. I think even if you find him with no reactives, he's very, like, he's. It, it, things could just go so poorly. And he does have reactive. He doesn't have BOTs though, so if they take a fight this far south, it could be a good play for them. But ideally, you want to find Quap. Quap is just going to get blown up super easily. Quap does not have enough armor. I mean, she's got the Lincolns, makes it a little more difficult yep. in terms of stun control. And in fact, talking about oh. the Quap, they're going to find Solo here. They'll take him down. Lil will bring no one in for this. What? It's just a DK. He doesn't have that many items. Uh, they, they're they're trying to fight. I mean, Newbie will probably be happy to play around with this. Pasha comes in. Ramses is there now as well, though. He has the God Strength. They force back the Quap. The Link is blocking the stun. Allows SCC to DP out in Faith with the Fiend's Grip. But he gets cancelled. Ramses gets the chance to put the BKB. They're turning towards Mugi. Can they bring down this Timber Saw? It doesn't look like they can. He gets himself out to the side with the Medallion buff. He's now looking to turn. Doesn't get the Chakron connection onto no one. But he cuts in low with the Whirling Death. No one trying for the TP out. Knows there's no way of Newbie cancelling it and he does escape safely. Wow, no one died for his pro. It's pretty insane. Having a lot of problems protecting their heroes, especially Kaka in particular. So, looks like Kaka is going to go for a Yules. They don't have any Diffusal Carriers. The best thing they have is Dispel Magic coming out from the Storm Panda, but he can only do so much in the fight. But they're, they're getting close to big items, too. Brewmaster has been slowly keeping up a net worth, so, too. So despite Dragonite being less farmed, he's going to have the Radiance on the uh, Brewmaster to make up for his uh, damage. That's going to be pretty great for them, especially because they've itemized heavy armor. You want magic damage to to hopefully kill the Timbersaw. Great Lincoln Sphere pick up, too. Great versus Dragon Tail. Great versus Spence done wonder if he's going to itemize versus it. Like, you can get Bloodthorn and, like, Blink Bloodthorn and Stun, but that's not the easiest to pull off. In the lane. Okay. Oh, he actually just does not care about Cyclone at all. They, they used Cyclone early on in the fight, last fight, to cancel the grip. So he had a little bit of a breather, but I could easily see him getting Cyclone three times, just like one of the first fights that we saw. Bash is very close to having Relic on his way to Radiance. It's only going to add up to the overall damage potential of VP in these it's drawn out fights that we are starting to see because of the, well, both teams having these tanky, beefy cores that can withstand, withstand a lot of damage over time. 28 minutes, still the newbie with the overall lead, but Ramsey's sitting strong at the top. 15k net worth, no slowing down in the pace of this man's farm. Crystalis is in his backpack, ready to go for the next fight. They can get a good stun. As we've been saying, as long as it's not onto Mugi, they have a very good chance of like, just taking out a hero straight away from the team fight with the damage that this Sven can kick out with a few crits. And just to illustrate the damage from the heroes, like Timbersaw, yeah. he's versus four strength heroes. He's the highest right now, but I think he's supposed to be way higher than 16.1k. And Sven, they're doing a very good job of cutting the Sven through the evasion, through the four staff, through the blink daggers, sleep grip. So Sven, he's not been doing that much damage because of great play, I would say, coming out from TV. And Brewmaster was also pretty close too, but he'll be able to come up there. I think he just purchased his relic. Oh, I just got the four yeah, radius, yeah, actually. Four, yeah, yeah. Oh, there go. Great time. Orchid has been complete for oh, SCCC, and this will be scanned down. It could be huge, because they could actually... They know it's there. They know what's going on, newbie. 
can maybe you gonna be able to go in though? They're gonna put the primal split. Pash is just gonna look to try and keep them out on the sideline. Silence there immediately onto Solo. That's gonna be the yoga down. It's falling low. Kaga comes in with a burst strike. It just hasn't been picked up yet. It's still on the ground. Rush just alive. No one. He gets the snatch. They did get the kill newbie, but no one on the DK grabs the Aegis, pops the BKP, trying to fight up against this. Moogie's gonna be sent up in air by the primal split. No one and Pasha look towards Faith. They cut down the bane. Kaka coming in, finds the burrow strike onto the DK. No one's gonna be down once. Silence is there onto the brew. Pasha to fall almost early as well. Drunken Ace buys him sometime, but it's not enough. KP and Kaka just toying with Ramsey's on the back lines away from this whole fight. He's stuck in the sprout, caught out by the burrow strike. Newbie, they take a third. No one does get out on the DK. He did manage to at least make sure that the Aegis didn't go the way of Newbie, but Newbie, they get the benefit of the gold and the experience. They take the team fight. They're now 12k ahead. There's no buyback on Pasha. There's no buyback on Ramses. Newbie, they could get away of easily at least to set in this middle lane if they wish to do so. Anyone else getting flashbacks? The Arteezy's spin trapped for a hole. No one. Okay. I mean, he just walks in and cuts down the SK, but yeah, he's got to get out of there. Lil will make sure of it. He also has cheese too. You can also pass it to no, uh, pass it to uh, the Wisp. Got the stun onto Moogie. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Without the spin, that's just not happening. A little is gone. Silence, cut down. They really want to try and find this melee racks here, newbie. Off the back of that fantastic team play, and they should get it. No one has to be careful. There's no IO to back him up, and that will be the melee racks down. He leads forward again. See if he can catch anyone on the retreat. Doesn't manage to find KP, but the Nightmare is holding him back. Moogie comes across with the Chakram. Silence now onto Pasha. SCCC ready to turn. Has the Silence down onto the Brewmaster. Not quite enough damage to finish him off. Pasha will survive. Gets himself back in range of the Shrine. But Newbie, they get that melee axe. They get out, only losing the SK. And they still maintain a hefty lead this game. Yep, now Moogie's coming to form. He just demolished at that Roche fight so hard. And he is he's getting there. They just kind of left him alone for the majority of the game and kind of delaying the problem over and over. But we'll see this rush again. Uh, three man burrow strike from Kaka into a, a, just a perfect sonic wave. And it was a bit of a saving grace that no one is able to pick up the Aegis. But this time, with two heroes already dead and newbie still having the full five man, it's just such a hard fight for VP to take. So great play from uh, Pacha. He like blinked out of the pit or he, he went outside the pit with his uh, brulings to try and slow them down as much as possible. But. Moogie got vision with the shock room, and after that, they, they just honed in on that kill. So keep in mind, newbie, they don't have, like, the best late game. Like, Timbers on this farm is pretty damn good, but they still lack in the physical damage uh, department. But with this sort of lead, I don't really think they're worried at all. Geek is going for heart, too. You really need to be more thinking. I mean, he, ju he just doesn't want to die, Ben. And I, I tell you what, he's not going to if he gets that heart complete. I mean, yeah, 8 0 8 this moment. He is on par to having a game and with a flawless KDA up top. Kaka actually finding the stun onto two. They are going to look to try and turn. They put the primal split. Dust comes out. Lil will relocate himself out of there. The Fiend's good comes down to Ramses, but Dragon Tail from no one stops the channeling. They focus down Faith. He's been dusted up. Glimmer Cape by him sometime with the magic resist. He turns with the brain sap, but they'll chase and they'll finish him off. Faith's gone. Kaka comes back in with the epicenter onto Lil. Not enough damage to finish off Io. Ramses looks for the stun, but Kaka sandstorm. It jukes it out. They don't have any sentry down VP, so they've got to back up. They blink away. Kaka's finding the chase. They cut down Lil. BKB's been popped by Ramses. He's going to wear out soon. He's trying to fight up, but again, he's been sprouted. Stuck in the trees. He'll be cut out of there by Moogie, but it's all good for Newbie as they have the Burrow Strike. He's down. He has to buy back Ramses as VP are forced back to the base. Again, Newbie taking an absolute storm of a team fight. And VP really giving it their all, but these fights are so hard to take. I guess he actually should be worried about dying because they have a Silver Edge now on the DK. They, I think, caught him out with like very low reactive stacks because he came down after the uh, Cyclone, so there were no creeps hitting him. And he looked a little bit mortal that fight. A tiny bit. In this game, despite that 20k gold lead, there, there definitely still is life left in the fight, fighting power of VP. And it's all about whether Ramsey's can get the job done. But as you said, with the items in play, it's a hard game for the Sven to really get the chance to beat into anyone. Yeah, the Sprout alone is already like yeah. huge against him. He doesn't have enough room for the, just a puny little Quelling Blade. He has it in his backpack, but I guess you can BKB and then swap it out. 
for us for to cut down one tree in the fight. I mean, he's going to need to in some of these cases. He has to. Yep. If he wants to get anything done with the the timing of BKB and God Strength. Okay, now Mugi should be close to kill. Twenty nine Bloodstone charges. Heart shivers. Garcilla Crescia. It, it's the dream. Five, maybe five heroes on him with a break with no reactive and a blood thorn to mitigate the evasion. Even, okay, maybe at that point they kill him. Maybe. May, I, it's still a maybe. It's not a guarantee. It's sure fire. And Kaka. Looking for no one there. How got the Fiend's grip? Pache has to put the Primal Spit, but oh, the Yule sending him up, meaning he can't get the chance to get it out along with the stun. SCCC has the Sonic Wave. They finish off no one. He's down. No buyback available. VP, they have to find some sort of trade off the back of this. They can't let Newbie get away with this one for free, but I don't know if they can actually punish them at all. The silence is there on Solo. SCCC jumps forward, gets the double kill. Lil going over to Ramsey with the Devil, but the Burrow strikes through. Lil is down. Ramsey puts the BKB, but it's all over for VP. They tap out. GG is called. Newbie, take game two. We're going to a game three. Nailed it with a timber pick. Absolutely. What, Nailed it. What a timber saw pick and what a timber saw play. He played defensively in terms of his iron, but 11 0 11. This has got to be some of the best timber saw main stage we've seen in a while. Absolutely flawless from Moogie. And Newbie also focused down the Wind Panda so that he wouldn't get Cyclone. I didn't really notice that until some of the tail end of the later fights, but that's why he wasn't getting Cyclone as much as you would have expected coming out from Virtus Pro. Well played. Oh, wow. And Moogie and SCCC, certainly the ones having the flashy plays. There's no doubt about that in terms of their KDA, but the team as a whole, Newbie, looking incredibly hot. Maybe you could argue...